Good morning everyone, it's Yvonne here to do your What's Cracking reading. Firstly, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Um, if you're new here and coming over from TikTok, welcome. Um, if you're interested in personal readings with me, doing live coaching or uh, joining me for classes, all of the instructions are below, basic. If you want to know more about me, you can whip over to the Aussie Goddess on Facebook like my page and you will also get included then on the free readings I do once a month. Um, they are at random. I guess I can't guarantee everyone a reading but I do get through a fair few. Um, I think that's all for today. I do need to get some dates ready though. The tarot class that I'm running in April is com completely full so um, I'm thinking of running one a little bit further along and doing another beginner's one and then perhaps doing an intermediate. They're good fun. They really are good fun. All right. Um, we're going to use the Rider Waite Tarot, apparently, for this reading. I don't remember picking them up, but it looks like I'm shuffling them. So <laughs> well, let's see where we're going. Okay, so we're starting today off with the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is a card sort of that's earned the title of the Wounded Warrior. It's about going round and round over and over again, doing the same thing. It's about cycling. But it is also about coming to the end of this cycle. And we've seen this a lot over the last few weeks. And I know a lot of people have been talking to me about this cycle closing and the lessons they've learned in this last sort of period of time. The Wounded Warrior talks of getting hurt. So whatever this is, whatever this cycle is that you've been going through over and over again, you've experienced pain through that. Um, it is about to come to the end because we know it's the nine. There is only the ten then and then the cycle's complete. So there's one here. So I'm feeling for many of you, you may still have this last lesson to go through to really understand what the universe spirit is teaching you about repeating patterns, doing things that hurt you, not really getting that you're hurting yourself because you're repeating something. So it's disadvantaging you in this particular energy. So it could be that you keep meeting people who treat you poorly. It could be that you keep picking jobs where you don't feel appreciated or respected. Whatever it is for you, you are coming to the end of a cycle. Okay, so it could be here. We have the King of Swords coming through, which does represent Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. This reading is only general. So it may not mean anything to you when I say what's going on here. But you may have dealt with very cold, unemotional or emotionally unavailable people. Sometimes it's really difficult to, to see that in a person until you've actually got to know them a little well. So I feel like this sort of you know, trying it out, like I always say, interviewing new applicants for, <laughs> for a romance. Um, you can find yourself picking similar people, but sometimes that means we have a little bit of a glitch in the fabric, a little glitch in the system that we need to tweak so we don't keep making perhaps the same. I don't want to call them mistakes because they really are lessons. But sometimes you've been doing something for so long a particular way that it's become very natural to you. Um, and I feel like perhaps you've done this once too often and you're starting to understand you have this pattern now. All right, so we have somebody coming in with a love offer here. So you're asking yourself, <laughs> is it more of the same? Do I get the same person with a different face? Is this going to be the way? Because I feel like you're seeing a pattern now. You're seeing that the pattern is existing. You're seeing what this pattern is doing. Um, and you're wondering if this new love that's being offered by a Leo, Sag or Aries 
by the looks of that is going to be another lesson I feel like for some of you here you may be being tested by the universe to see whether you've learned um, whether you've learned how to how to work with the pattern I mean when you look at the difference in energies today the energy is quite different so I feel like you probably are going to receive some sort of offer from somebody who is willing to put in the work. But perhaps now you've become a little unsure and a little cautious. But always remember, if you're working with someone who's willing to work with you, then the trust issues become easier. So... Moving into something new, if you feel uncomfortable, if you're unsure, it's okay. It's okay. Because if this person feels enough for you, they will make sure that you feel really safe in that relationship. We do have the Five of Swords here. Wow. So maybe for some of you, yeah, for some of you, you're going to walk away from a new person. I feel that the pattern here may be repeating again and you may be unsure of what you're receiving again because I see you walking away and going back into hermit mode and closing out the cycle. So maybe you're going to be able to see in action this time how you work with this cycle or this energy. I remember somebody years ago saying to me, when I said, I don't know why I attract these people. And I was told that I don't attract them, that they find me. So it's a bit of that energy of the moth to the flame or the wolf in sheep's clothing. You are just an incredibly beautiful person who accepts people on face value without considering your own needs and this is your lesson you have to learn that it's not about the worry of hurting someone else it's about how are you going to proceed in your life if you are constantly thinking of everybody else's feelings all right let's see where this is going this is something that you're hanging on to too <laughs> okay so if you're the type of person who worries about other people more than yourself, if you're the type of person who always worries about hurting others, if you're the type of person who puts other people's needs in front of your own, then you are codependent. There is this sort of miscon misconception that codependency is dependency and it's a very different thing. It's a very unhealthy way of being. There is some element of codependency, I guess, in lots of relationships. But if you're in a relationship that you feel really uncomfortable in and you are unable to leave it because you're worried about the other person's feelings, then you are codependent and that is unhealthy. If you are putting your needs behind other people's, then you are codependent. You can look up a lot of these things on YouTube. Um, Christina Lopez just put out a really good video on codependency. I'd highly recommend her. Very easy to watch. Um, and she's very in tune with both the psychology and the spirituality, which of course I am too. So I feel I can relate very well to her videos. So have a look at hers. Much easier to understand than some of the other stuff that's out there. And codependency is a term that is thrown around a lot in the wrong context. So if you feel this is you I'm talking about, really look into it because it will help you to heal that and stop attracting people who do the same thing. All right, let's move through. Okay, so we have the Four of Swords. There's some healing to be done here. Three of Wands, healing before you move forward so you don't do this again. There is love for you in the future though. So there is love definitely coming in and maybe that's your King of Wands that's coming through there. Um, of course, with the King of Wands, it doesn't necessarily have to be a male. It can be male or female. It's the energy that the King of Wands brings through. Um, 
the king of wands can be a very um, independent person, but not in a not in a codependent way, but somebody who can be intradependent with you or interdependent. And there is a big difference. Wow. Okay, I don't want to get into deep there. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. There is an energy of somebody coming in and the universe does have someone here for you. Um, and this person is right, but I feel like there's still healing to be done before you move through to the 10. You're not quite ready to go there um, because there is still some hanging on. Now, I always think when we talk about hanging on to cycles and things like that, a lot of the time, you know, people say, but I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm doing. This may be different for everybody. But if you find that you're meeting people and you meet someone who's the same again, you need to ask yourself, how do I heal that? How do I heal that energy? Because if you're repeating a pattern, then there's healing that needs to be done. Very often codependency comes from childhood. Um, and it's something we learn very, very early. Um, and it sort of takes on the guise of people pleasing or being a bit of a doormat sometimes for people. And it is healable. It isn't easy, but it is healable. But there is someone here for you, but you've got to strike a balance here with the temperance card. Seven of cups coming through. There's an illusion, you see. You're seeing things not as they really are. Six of cups, there we go, childhood stuff. Somewhere in your childhood here, whoever I'm speaking to, you have learned you have learned not to have a balance, basically. You have learned how to... And remember, if people are teaching you from a very young age this idea of codependency that other people are more important than you, then they have something to gain from that. Whether they're doing it intentionally or whether they're not doing it intentionally, they still have something to gain from that. So if you can get everybody treating you better than they're treating themselves, you have something to gain. Absolutely. And I feel like there is some sort of illusion around this. And the one illusion that comes up very often is this idea of I like to do this for other people. But I always say to people, what is it about this that you like? Does it help you to avoid conflict? Does it help you to feel good about yourself? in which case you're validating yourself from an external source and that's not healthy either. Whatever it is, ask yourself, what is this illusion I've learned around how other people are more important than myself? Because this is what's getting you into these situations where you keep repeating some sort of pattern here. I mean, it doesn't always have to be romantic. You could be attracting people who are friends or family members that always expect you to, to be there for them, but don't really return the favor to you. There's no reciprocation. No reciprocation. All right, so we have the sun coming through with the judgment card. Okay. And it's funny, isn't it? Because I'm sitting here thinking, if this is the way you like living your life, and if it is the way you like to be, then there's nothing wrong with that if you feel that way. But then you can't be asking yourself why you don't get the love you deserve. Because there's the answer to your question. You're not finding people who can reciprocate. They only know how to take. But there's a rebirth here, something that's going to bring you a lot of joy and happiness. And I feel like it's whoever this is. Look at this justice card. I have the justice card over the judgment card over the sun. There's also the lover's card and the temperance card, which means half our reading this morning is made up of major arcana. So there's something powerful going down here. So if you haven't been able to see what you're doing or how you're cycling or what this cycle looks like, and it's really interesting because I watched a couple of readings yesterday where people were talking about exactly the same thing and it blows me away how we're all on the same page. If you can't see the cycle, I feel very strongly like the universe is going to show you here. 
there's a rebirth here. Now, a beautiful woman said to me yesterday, tell me about the phoenix. All right. So the phoenix was a bird that died and rebirthed itself in a better version. And it did that over and over again, always becoming a better version of itself. And this is what the judgment card talks about. It talks about rebirth. It's being called to, it's biblical, really. It's being called to answer for what you've done. So it's being called to go over what you've done in the past and do it differently coming back. It's like you're getting a second chance to do it again, but this time do it differently. So this time you do it without all the glitches. This time you have a greater understanding. And this is how lessons are learned. Because you may not get it all the first time around, but you get something and then you get a chance to do it again. So you do it differently and then you get something more. And that's how we learn. It's like the child falling over or trying to walk. You get back up, you do a couple of steps, you fall over. Each time you fall over, there's another lesson learned. And that's what the judgment card is all about. It's about taking everything that you've learned, putting it all together and bringing yourself back as a better version of yourself with more learning. So there is something here about familial karma. There's this energy that you're probably going to be healing many generations of people who've been doing the same thing. And that's the wonderful thing about living in the world today is we get to put right all of the things that people have not recognized before we got here. Because this was the way of the world. Unfortunately, codependency seems to be more dominant in females than males. Not saying that males don't have it either, but it seems to be more in women. So with the justice card, there is something now that needs to be, it needs to be straightened out. It needs to be flattened out. The universe is saying we can't go on this way. We have to learn how to self-love, how to see ourselves as important in the world so that we can attract the love we want. And I feel like here, the universe is about to send you somebody who's going to change it all up for you. And you may question it and it may feel uncomfortable, but you're learning something here. This could be very likely somebody from your past who has been through a lot of healing as well. Somebody perhaps that you're destined to be with. They have been through their healing and they are being called on to come back in for you now to see each other as very different people. All right, so we have the energy of the Nine of Wands coming through, Wounded Warrior. Possibly dealing with people in the past who could have been, you know, at the very least emotionally unavailable, at the very most narcissistic. And there's a whole range in there. Because not everybody's a narcissist, but some people will carry one of two, three traits of that that are damaging. We all carry some energy of narcissism. It's part of our makeup, but we don't all use it to gain to gain strength for ourselves. But recognize it in yourself is really healthy. There is an offer coming in to you from somebody who could be a Leo Sag or Aries. This person is destined to return or come in as a new person possibly, but whoever this person is, they're coming in to show you you've healed. There is some really deep lesson here you're learning. I feel that because you've been through so many experiences, you may be untrusting, you may be deciding that you don't want to go ahead with this, you may have a lesson here that you've got to learn, but there is a closing off of this and more working here on yourself. So it's funny because you often hear people coming out of relationships and getting straight into another relationship without really doing the healing first. And very often that's when you get that wounded warrior energy. If you haven't learned the lessons and you haven't done the healing, chances are pretty good you're going to meet the same person with a different face because you'll keep running that lesson through until you've got it. That's what the universe does. All right, let's read an oracle card for you. Oh, 
Oh boy, need a bit stubborn today, aren't we? Nope. Hey, there it is, the choice. Very nice, 62. There is a choice that you need to make. You are aware of it already, or it is coming to your awareness very soon. Embrace the unknown and say yes. You have the opportunity to enrich your world, to receive, and therefore be able to share much more. If anxiety or fear arises, guilt or shame, treat it as the cleansing of your emotional waters as they receive so much more inflow from the divine ocean. Let the old layers rise to the surface of your awareness to be washed away. What seems to be so much in the context of your own emotional waters is not so much at all when compared to the great ocean, to what the great ocean is capable of holding. So let the divine ocean take out the old, washing it away from you and replenishing you with the new that you may serve life all the better. This oracle brings you guidance. It is safe to choose now. There is no wrong choice, just a choice that resonates with your heart. If it is challenging you, that is an opportunity for you to let the divine cleanse and lift you into the vibration where you feel at peace with your choice, where you can accept the grace it will bring to you. Do this now. It's your time to step up, make your life easier on yourself and open to love in a more trusting way. Come now. The divine is calling you to play. I'm going to read you the poem. Our lives are measured in choices we have made along the path we call living. Each compass point a possibility, each step an opportunity, seemingly random. Each decision moves us inexorably in a direction, both unknown and yet somehow familiar. For upon reflection, the strength we find in choosing or the surrender of letting all unfold leads us to the place we started from where we make that first choice to be here again. Isn't that beautiful? And so in line with the reading. Have a wonderful day.